If you have a business, then you better have a brand. But defining exactly what a brand is, is a tough game because it can be hard to pinpoint exactly where a brand starts and ends. Is it the colors that a company uses, or the way that it advertises? Is it the values that a company has, or the tweets that it sends? Or is it simply a picture of Russell Brand? But a big factor of having a good brand is good brand design. And good brand design has texture. You can almost hold it in your hands, and that texture is the same across anywhere that you find that brand, so it's consistent. And when a company does a logo redesign, they usually won't just redesign the logo. They'll redesign how they show up on different social channels and how their website looks, and most importantly, what they put on a tote bag. But what if we don't have the time to design custom tote bags, but we still wanna have a consistent brand identity? Well, frankly, today, we're going to cheat. We're gonna ignore everything that we should be doing when you create a brand identity and get to the guts of what a brand is. No workshop, no tone of voice, just straight brand. Essentially, we're gonna speed run creating a brand like someone would speed run Minecraft. Color, fonts, logo, diamonds, the whole shebang. So let's get started. All right, step one. Before we jump into any aspect of design, it makes sense for us to first look at our customers. Because our brand style and how the brand looks and feels is going to reflect the kind of customer that we want. Some brand workshops start off by asking, if your brand was peanut butter, would it be crunchy or smooth? Well, let's cuddle that and simply ask, who are our customers and how do we want those customers to view our brand or our business? If we wanted to, we could look at our competitors and ask, how do we want to compare to these competitors? Maybe it's kind of like this competitor, but less serious. Or we could look at brands that we want to resemble and then cherry pick exactly what we like about those brands. Maybe it's this color or that font. Now, depending on how fast we want to do all this, we could take all these ideas and put them onto some kind of mood board or collage of some sort to group all of these ideas together. And if we want, we can even slap on some buzzwords on how we might describe our brand, like fun, honest, textured, exclusive, youthful, honey flavored. The kind of words that come across when you think of the customer, the kind of brands they already interact with, and how we want our brand to come across. And with that, we pause to reflect on these ideas. And now move on to design. Now I'm going to come from the point of view that we're starting from a place where a business already has an existing logo. Maybe there's a business that has an existing brand, but they want to change everything but the logo. Now, if you also needed to redo the logo itself, then it can be a little bit harder to speed run because rush logos can sometimes be cruddy. There are also logo generators and logo packs that you can use, but frankly, I don't think you can beat drawing out a bunch of ideas until you come across something good. And you can find plenty of examples of this online if you search up something like Slack redesign or Duolingo redesign. But again, we already have a pre-existing logo, but everything else is going to be flipped on its head. So let's start with font. If your brand is Avatar, then the right font to use would be, I don't know, Papyrus, I guess. But for any other brand, you'll probably want to use something other than Papyrus. There are a lot of great paid fonts, but when it comes to using them for logos, it can get pretty expensive. So we have two options of places we can look to find great free fonts. The obvious one is to go to Google Fonts, type out your brand name, and pick a font that suits the style that you're looking for and we can filter down to get to all the good stuff. The other option is using Font Brief, also all great fonts. And if we click on free, we're now also seeing a bunch of fonts that we can use for free and from a variety of different font foundries. So I'm gonna go back to Google Fonts to find a font that I like. I like this one. And now we can download it to bring it up in Figma. I'm just going to relaunch Figma so we can see our new font and I'll search unbounded. I want the right balance between the size of the text and the size of the logo. So they feel like they fit together naturally. And we can still customize this font further to make it a unique logo type. What I'm going to do, I'll just group this and bring a copy up so that I still have my font available. But now I'm going to outline this text. I'm going to outline the stroke. I'm going to go object, outline stroke. And so now rather than have a font, I actually have shapes that I can use. And this becomes handy if I want to manipulate these shapes. So here I might select this top corner and this top corner and then bend them to give a new look. And that looks okay. I don't, I don't love that. I don't hate that. I'm going to take that back and try some other different things. Maybe I have this little eye. Maybe I'll do something with this. Maybe I'll remove it and I'll change the shape. Maybe I'll use this little nose from the bear. Let's bring that up, make that the right color. Pop that in. 
And again, that's okay. I don't really love it or hate it, but we're just playing around so we can keep on trying different things. Let me go back. Maybe this K slant, maybe we could try that on the D. Maybe to somehow touch the I, let's try that. And then this one's gonna come down. Let's bring that one up there. And honestly, it's not great, but we can keep on playing around like this. Let me try one more time. I'm gonna bring this down. Let me just outline this one more time. Maybe I can curve this one and these ones as well. Whoopsie daisies. Kind of all of these kind of shapes curving this way. It's kind of feeling a bit short now. I might actually pull these pieces up. One, two, and three, bring those up. Bit high. Bring them down a little bit and I'll make this come straight. Now I could spend a lot of time playing around with this to get it just right, but we're gonna leave it for now. So now that we have a font selected for our logo, we can now find another font to pair with our logo font that we can use across our branding. So I can either go to font pair and have a look at how different font combinations work together, or I can just hop back to one of our font websites and find a font that I think will be a suitable fit. Roboto or Open Sans could be nice. Maybe let's try those out. Let me open up a text box. See that text is already too big. There's the other one, Roboto. That kind of seems like a, quite a nice fit. I'm just gonna up this a little bit. A little bit more. And that's about right. So that's our logo and font done. And now we can talk about color. And there's a lot of psychology that comes into effect when we talk about color. But the fact that red makes us hungrier is only gonna get you so far if your restaurant branding is terrible. So instead, we're just gonna focus on a color palette that somewhat suits the customer and just looks freaking good. And I'm gonna give you two options of places that you can look to find the right palette. Number one is Color Hunt, and there are hundreds of four color palettes that we can browse, including filtering by a specific tag, such as retro, warm, night, and even skin. And better yet, you can copy the hex right from each color to bring it directly into your project. Next is Cool Laws, or however you say it. And what I like about this one is that you can hit spacebar to generate a new palette at any time which is extremely satisfying. But then you can adjust specific colors within that palette. So I can click here to view the shades and go up and down, or I can add and remove as many colors as I want. Let me remove that one. And that way I can generate a unique palette for my brand. And so now we have a color palette. And so what we might do next is try our logo with the different color combinations to make sure that these colors really fit our brand. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create some rectangles that are just a little bit bigger than our logo. Let me make sure the logo is above the rectangle. About that is fine. And I'll just copy this out four times. Let's just make this just a black for now. And I can start using these colors on this grid. We have a dark and we'll just also give it a white. Here we have a light blue with kind of a dark blue, maybe a pink with our dark blue, this kind of peach, maybe also with the dark blue. And so we can see exactly how these different color combinations look. Let me actually try kind of more of this strong blue with the peach or the pink. That's okay, I think with the light blue is actually quite nice. So as you can see, we have many ways that we can use this color palette. So let's move on to flare. And flare is about as good as term as make it pop is. But what we're really talking about is how we can use our brand with different imagery and different elements to make our brand stand out even more while still staying consistent. And it covers all the way down to whether we round the corners on our buttons or keep them sharp. So if we have a call to action section, how can we accent that? We could use imagery or we could use different illustrations or just certain shapes and icons. 
icons that help accent our idea and our look. So let's try different design ideas in the context of a call to action section. And we'll start with adding a bit of color. Just use our colors that we have, change our call to action as well to dark blue, maybe with a white. That's fine for now, so that can be our backup. And so what we'll do first is we'll try it with some imagery. Um, let me just drop in an image block and whatever image we have on file. That works fine, cheesy image of woman on laptop. Uh, and we'll do, we can do the image on the left and the text on the right for now. Let me ungroup uh, these and we'll move this text to the left and this can sit here for now. And maybe that's already an idea for a call to action section. Let me just center align these a little bit higher. There we go, that's not too shabby at all. Let's try a couple of different variations on this. Maybe on the left, but maybe our call to action is down below. So it's kind of sitting in this box neatly. Um, and maybe the text here could also go on the left, on the right, sorry like that. So you're kind of reading it towards the call to action. Maybe also make this one kind of sit smaller within the bounds of this call to action. Make sure that's lining up. Could be something like that. We could even do some sort of crazy shape with the image. If I go, maybe take this image out. This is here. This maybe goes, yeah, maybe that can stay there. And then the image kind of sits here and then up here as well. Line that up a bit better. And I will group these corner radius, uh, corner radius of 20. Keep adjusting that. Maybe it'll be a bigger one just for this one. Pop that down there. And uh, I've already grouped this one. In fact, Let's not group it, let's combine this and then do 20 now so it curves these edges and then I can adjust for more space and then I can just use this image here. You know, it, it's, it, I like the style. I think the image maybe doesn't work so well, but I like the style, so let's leave it for now. And the button can kind of fit that style I think it's 20, maybe more like 15, maybe something like that. We can, we can leave that for now. And we can try one that's instead of an image, we're using uh, an illustration. Let's bring this over this way, get rid of that image and we'll pop in an illustration. We'll uh, change the background actually. Maybe this is a light one and we'll move our content to the left now, left align that. And that kind of already works as is. Maybe let's make a couple of different versions of this one. Maybe this one has crazy colors. No, oh, very much not that. Uh, let's go back to that and Let's try, and I will make a crazy shape. What a wild shape that is, and then 
use our pink and maybe I'll use that same shape and I'll highlight some of the text. Three minutes. A little bit less crazy. And now we have a style that we can keep using across the rest of our branding. We can do it to the button if we wanted to. Yeah, that's fine. You know, we can uh, move on from that. We can try something else now. We can try with uh, shapes instead of illustrations. We've already got some shapes going on. Maybe we can continue with these shapes. Let me pop these to the center. And what color haven't we used yet? Let's use a dark dark blue um, that is quite strong but I don't hate it there is our dark blue bring in white and our call to action is gonna be pink with the blue yeah with the blue and got some funky shapes here they're not really doing that much maybe instead of the fill it can be like a stroke and it's really just there only to accent and not really do much else and we don't want it covering the text or anything Maybe a little bit is fine. Make sure these are up top. And that's kind of almost an idea. Maybe that is already an idea. So let's just group that, make it a frame, kind of lock the bounds of these into the call to action. So that's kind of subtle. We could also use more 3D shapes. If I have a pack candy, which I think I do, let me get rid of these ones without the backgrounds and I'll change this back to maybe that strong blue we can try. It is quite strong. And uh, let me get a shape. Here are a couple, pop those in somewhere. Definitely seen kind of 3D shapes used more often these days. Maybe one there, one there, one down there. Make sure it feels kind of balanced. In fact, I might even pop that out. And that's not too bad. Um, I might just change this to, none of these colors are really working for me. Um, how was that other pink? That's not too bad. That's not too bad, I don't hate that. And so in just that time, we now have a bunch of different options that we've just tried. And so now that we've done different styles for our call to action section, we can now use these same styles for anywhere that we want to use our brand, including blog posts or bus advertisements, or even on a tote bag. So that's the fastest way we can design a brand identity from scratch. And yes, this is simplified to almost an offensive level, but it gives us time to try out different ways that we can view and use our brand and to try out completely different branding ideas. So let me know in the comments if you think there's something important that you think I didn't cover or how you approach designing a brand identity. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Don't forget to water your plants and I'll see you on the next one. So I don't currently have any sponsors right now, but if you like my videos, then feel free to take a look at my Webflow templates. I have a bunch of different styles for portfolios and for agency and for SaaS. And now I also have a couple of different ones for membership sites. I actually did a video on Webflow templates a while ago, which I hope to update soon. So feel free to look out for that. But for now, you can find links to all of the tools that I've used and also my templates in the description below.